This is a Chucky Beat production. 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 All right, everybody, welcome back to Barbells and Burnouts. I'm here with my homeboy, Josh, about this beautiful, beautiful Datsun. And it's got a surprise in it. You want us to tell us about it? Um, I got a 74 260Z with LS swap. Um, got an LQ9 block, LS3 heads, um, 600 lift cam. It's about a good 520 horsepower from the crank. Okay, okay. We're making 460 to the tire. Car roughly weighs 25, 80 with me out of it. All right, all right. So, what made you decide to go with the LQ9 in it? Because I know the LQ9 is out of a, what, a 06, 04 Escalade? 06. You guys, yeah, 06. 06 Cadillac, it's a donor vehicle. Um, the reason why I want to go with that one, that one is, you know, going to iron blocks versus aluminum. First off, it's cheaper, easier to get your hands on. Um, they're stronger. <laughs> <laughs> it's the main thing, they're stronger. Um, uh, people out here with five threes making a thousand horsepower. You make a little bit less with a six O stock, you know, bottom end and all that stuff. But um, basically, what I've done, um, you know, gave a little cash for the block. You know, I left the bottom end alone. It's fine leaving it alone. LS3 heads. Uh, Jags had a sale uh, last year mm -hmm. on LS3 CNC and ported heads. Uh, I was looking up the flow numbers at 600 lift. It made 350 CFM. Pretty good news for some people that's out here shopping. So. Yeah. With that ratio, with the 600 lift cam, um, that jumped in 60 horsepower from the stock 317 heads that came with it. So I made 400 to the tire with the 317 heads and the cam, and uh, as soon as I did the head swap, I jumped 60 uh, on the dyno. And it makes a tremendous, tremendous gain. Like, okay. you can feel it. You know, 60 horsepower, you know, some people say, ah, you don't notice it. You notice know it's pretty good. Okay. It sounds like it's a real, real fun car. Yeah. So, Basically, what, what is the purpose of this car? Is it like a show car, a toy car? What do you do with it? Well, that leads me to bring to the conclusion of saying, hey, yeah, it's a it's an everyday car. I can drive this car every day, and I roughly get about 21, 22 to the gallon. I got a, it's a 12 gallon fuel cell, but it's got the foam in it. So roughly when I fill it up, it takes 20 bucks. I think it really holds maybe like eight to 10 gallons with the foam in it. So, um, it, it, it gets pretty good gas mileage. I, 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 I like taking the car shows and everything. It's cool doing that. But, you know, it's also having that power get on the highway. Yeah. Somebody mess with you. Yeah. You go ahead and, you know, that loose, drop it yeah. here and disappear. That's right. You know, yeah. away from it. So, the whole purpose of me be, building this car, I always wanted to build this car, man. It was like when I was 16, I went to uh, automotive uh, mechanic school in high school. We take a tech mm -hmm. bus and we used to go to, uh, to tech school and every third and fourth period. And uh, that lasted two hours every time we got there. And, uh, and I was talking to my teacher, and I was looking at cars and shells and bodies. And I came across this car, and I, you know, I just played Forza. I'm a Forza fan, by the okay, way. Okay, okay. So I just played Forza. I said, that's a nice body. It comes with an inline six. It's got plenty of room for a V8. Yeah, yeah. And you got a lot of room to work with. And I said, you know what? I might as well just get that car if I can, if you can find one. So I started looking, you know, Craigslist mm -hmm. and all that stuff, and Craigslist. And I looked, and I found one. And back then, I didn't have no money, and I was like, man, I'm gonna get that car one day. I didn't know, I just wanted a 280, a 260, or a 240. Mm -hmm. And uh, around the time, I think, about two years ago, I come across this one in the neighborhood. The guy didn't want to sell it, and uh, I talked him into it. He let yeah. go, I paid him in payments. Took it home <laughs> running, it drove. Had a little car ready issue, so it had cut off here and there, yeah, but yeah, I got yeah. it to the house. And uh, I didn't really care, you know, I liked the inline six, but I had the motor on the engine stand already ready to go. So I was like, okay, it's, I had fun my little six of them, so I'm gonna take it out. People from Barber Racetrack in Birmingham came and bought it. Okay. The motor and trans that you know, they came out of it. They was gonna make it to a race car. I had to get it out because my pops wanted a more garage space. And uh, so eventually I got it all worked together, you know, saved my money up, paid this car off. It's mine. Now I got the motor, built it. It's mine. Put it in there. And uh, I had to get a lot of stuff from CX Racing. Yeah. CX Racing made the motor mount kits, uh, the headers. It's gotta be Pacific headers, cause uh, on the driver's side, the headers kinda go down in a 45 degree angle. Okay. And on the passenger side, it kinda go like 90 degrees mm. and kinda curve back. Mm. Cause it's gotta, it's gotta bypass a pocket. It's gotta start, it's got to start on that side. So it's the way it's gotta be designed. As far as that goes, um, it's pretty easy to build, really putting it all together. I think the most major hard thing about it that kinda was frustrating me was 
cows are gonna design that transmission to work. Yeah. Um, and 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 the slave cylinder being strong enough for a stage two clutch. Yeah. So obviously I didn't use the because it came as a five speed, so it had a clutch pedal and all that yeah. already there. But obviously that slave cylinder wasn't strong enough. I mean that master cylinder was strong enough, and obviously the slave cylinder on this trans is internal. Um, so you get the transmission. It's a TR 6060. It's not a T56. A lot of people do T56 walks with the CX racing. Uh, they give you the T56 mounts, but the TR66, I had to make my own mounts. It's a little bit wider, uh, it's a little bit more beefy, yeah. it holds a lot more power, uh, and it's supposed to shift a little bit smoother. It's supposed to be a nice, more firm shift, but it doesn't come with, uh, it doesn't come with the, uh, the shifter stick, as I say, in the actual housing. It comes with a, uh, a shift, uh, I guess what to say, uh, a shift linkage. And uh, so basically you have to find a spot, a good spot in the car to kind of mount your shifter. Yeah. And you know, you know, you link the your linkage and uh, kind of make it work with the transmission from where yeah. it sits with the engine. Kind of full so, fabrication. Yeah, full fabrication. <laughs> so I cut, you know, I had to cut a bigger hole out for where the stick goes yeah. and all that stuff. And just kind of took some measurements, fabricated, did some fiberglass work, and it kind of got it right. But it still needs work. It's still on. And he did this himself. Yeah, it took a while. His performance, you know, it's yeah. himself. It's something I'm, you know, something I'm starting up. But I've been doing it. I had a previous to this. I had a '96. And that's, that had the LQ4. In there. That had the LQ4. In there. But it's the LQ9 flat top pistons. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's about pressure about still about 10 to 1. Okay. I'm not too high, so it's I can go 83. I don't lose no power. Really. So you tell me about that compression. Do you have plans for forced induction with it? Ah uh, man, I want to go turbo, man. Oh, I got room for it right on the right on the passenger front side, but I'm waiting because I just want to I want to make the car stay alive for a while. I uh, that's that's ARP heads does, that's, that's LS9 head gasket, yep, yep, yep. That, that's, that's more stuff. I mean, I can do it, um, you know, I can, uh, I can, you know, I can, I can build my own turbo system and wastegate and all that stuff. It's just money. Yeah, I so, understand that. But I'm it can happen, it can it happen. Yeah. yeah, it can happen. Okay, okay, sounds like a beautiful, beautiful build. Well, um, I guess we're about to go do a little bit of pulls, have some fun, see what it's really about, right? All right. All right, all right then. We'll do that. recording yeah. oh speaking of that i wish we could catch up what i, I didn't not, i was not aware oh man this thing moves i think the second time when i was expecting it was better than the first <laughs> what oh i'm actually speechless right now <laughs> He doesn't, he's not about it. He's not about it. <laughs> oh, he is about it! <laughs> Are you coming? You about it? You ain't about it? About oh, it? a pull? Oh, <laughs> you about to just about to pull? I'm on a one, two, three. I'm pulling, I'm pulling, ready? Ready. Nah, he had to be ready. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh, you saw 
Oh, you smell his brake fluid. <laughs> so you can't it's just for shits and giggles. The what? Just for shits and giggles. Brake pants. Okay, okay. Only okay. my front, uh, front brakes working. <laughs> what kind of car is that? It's a 2 6 Nissan. Really? Yeah. I think it's sweet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, check out my YouTube channel. That's what I'm filming. I got it's barbells and burnouts. Barbells and I think I heard you guys actually. Yeah, man. I film around. I, I go to all the meets and everything. Yeah, my friend Keegan told me that. Oh, your friend's the Keegan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, man. All right, so hopefully they can hear me. But this has been probably the best review so far. This car has put me in the back of my seat. This is on level with the CTSV and the VET. So thank you for letting me do this review, Josh. No problem, man. No problem. Catch you guys later. Remember to like, share, subscribe. And peace out.